every every really successful person loves what they're doing. That's why they can work 24 seven. To be where I'm at in my life, uh, work ethic has been the, has been the game changer. I've outworked my competitors. I've outworked people right. in the marketplace. You know, it seems like people fear that work ethic. Like they're they're almost scared of having to put that kind of effort and energy into it. How did you find yeah. it within? You, like like, not only do it but like amplify it. I, you know, I I figured out the secret, and the secret is you have to love it. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just explaining to one of my really good friends, who's one of my best friends, and, and it, that's only happened over the last year and a half. And it's because my second ex wife, he was her for he, he, he was her first ex wife. So we're both, <laughs> ma- we're both married to the same woman. And I took on his two daughters mm. for seven years yeah and we we always stayed super nice to each other and we got to know each other towards the end and like we just put a video out where lexi one of you know our daughters uh talks about having two fathers mm-hmm. for father's day and his whole life has changed like uh he never really had anybody really believe in him or be yeah. a, like dude you can really do this like yeah. like he drops 55 pounds he handsome son of a bitch got tons of charisma and a really strong work ethic yeah. and um me and him have uh, just like incredibly bonded over over this last year and a half mm-hmm. um and you know it's it's like so many different types of people you know, who want to start the program, they don't realize that they, they don't realize that it's all the story you tell yourself, that inner voice. And you can tell yourself you don't like something and then you're not going to do it. One of my I have a lot of favorite quotes, but one of my absolute favorites is if you say you can or you say you can't, mm-hmm. you're right. Yeah. Henry Ford, I always say Henry Ford said that. But what the hell did he ever do? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, you, you know, know. Can hit the automobile. Yeah. Up and dig. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it was really, you know, the front, you know, and so many things that, you know, he, he put brilliant people around him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, any question that he had that he couldn't answer because he didn't have the education, mm-hmm. he had somebody for that. And yeah. they were the best at what they did. Yeah. You know, surround yourself around great people. But he loved what he was doing. If you look at like, Every every really successful person loves what they're doing. That's why they can work 24-7. Yeah. Like I never consider, you know, I'll get tired and exhausted from giving so much at times. Yeah. Because when you're on, and mm-hmm. I bring people into my house like just like two months ago. <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever heard of Paul Walter Hauser. Yeah. Uh, did you did you see the movie um, Richard Jewell? I didn't the see Clint it. All uh-huh. It's it's a phenomenal movie. He also did I Tanya. He just had a uh, he's he had the number three spot in Cruella, the Disney movie that just came out. Yeah. Emma Thompson, Emma Stone, and um, and Paul Walter House was number three on the card. He's a great actor, but he needed to lose thirty seven pounds. Mm. In seven weeks, wow! For this next role, plus he realized he wants to lose a hundred, mm-hmm. but he needed to lose thirty-seven. To, you know, he said thirty-five, you know, to forty pounds for this role, yeah. and he lost thirty-seven pounds in seven weeks for me, completely changing his lifestyle, mm-hmm. and that's really what it took. But it wasn't just him; he had his, you know, his, uh, his um, uh, personal assistant with him, and that people could not see him, and and then I had people there. I mean, my house was nuts. Yeah for eight weeks it got to a point where me and my my girlfriend Paige were like counting it down like one day she she just said to me 36 hours I go 36 hours I said 36 hours to what she goes until it's just us (laughs) (laughs) and I realized yeah wow and we got I remember going 12 hours you know and I I loved having everybody there but you got to be on and and it's draining, you know, and we're teaching people how to 
eat real food and mm -hmm. you know you can't just change your lifestyle and not understand why you're doing it mm -hmm. and you got to really want to do it yeah if you don't want to do it then you're not gonna yeah you know i hate this diet stop right now because what's the first three letters of the word diet yeah exactly <laughs> you, know, you gotta love it i don't care what it is you know yeah I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's so interesting. You say that, uh, you know, in my experience, you know, I work with a, so let's talk about purpose for a second, because, you know, you mentioned earlier, it's, you know, you, you had a stellar wrestling career started late, the whole deal. And for the average person, I don't think they understand how young a lot of wrestlers start when they first start wrestling. What yeah. early, early twenties, probably at the latest, right? Even teens, even yeah. teens, you know, you'll see a couple of guys come in after 25, but they're mostly between teens yeah. and, um, you know, 23, 24, by, you know, they're, they're up and going. When I, when I got in the ring at 35 and a half, two of my best friends, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Mick Foley, yeah. and they were both wrestling for nine years already. Oh, wow. You know? And, and yeah. they were, no, they were wrestling for five years uh, and they were uh, nine years younger than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah they were wrestling since they were like 22 21 22 years old yeah you know, so i was i was i was the guy who got the pull out con you know, <laughs> because, because they were the veterans you know? yeah well you know i wanted to bring that up because you know it's uh i had the i mean I, when i say the pleasure distinct honor my wife and i sat down and watched uh relentless last night which for those who have not seen that movie on amazon prime you have to watch that and resurrecting Jake the Snake Roberts. You've got to watch both of those films for a variety of different things. But number one is I think people get confused with quote unquote success or purpose and all that kind of stuff as being like something you just kind of like, you automatically know, you automatically have a semblance of it. You automatically know where you're headed and what you're going, you know, but I'm also been telling my audience for a long time that the greatest purpose in life you'll ever have is serving the person you used to be. And DDPY was born out of a back injury. Right. You know, right. And how did you use that to transform your life? Because that seemed like that taught you the trans, the uh, transformational process of transforming others' lives. Yeah. You know, again, at first it was just for me <laughs> yeah. and everything that I teach everyone. Like I just started using this thing called a navage and it puts water in your nose and sucks it out your nose. And it go, it's like, it cleans your whole face. Like I love it so much. Mm -hmm. I got, my brother got a hold of the president of that company and i mean i can breathe for the yeah. first time since i was 12 years old and i got hit by that car and i fixed mm -hmm. my nose a couple of times but you know, it's always clogged always yeah. and he got me on my brother turned me on to this thing and i was so i'm using every single day i said rory get a hold of him i want to put that as part of something that we're selling because mm -hmm. it's amazing. Yeah. I only do, I only put stuff out there that I love. Um, and in this scenario, you know, I, I had blown up in 96, 97 and 98. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I literally, you know, headlined 13 out of 24 main event pay-per-views. Wow. And yeah, I was, you know, I was on fire, but I wasn't making the money. Mm -hmm. Now, going into 99, I get paid. Mm -hmm. And that's when I rupture my L4 and L5. And uh, I'm told by three different spine specialists, I'm never going to wrestle again. And my first wife, Kimberly, who's still one of my best friends, and we're super tight. We talk all the time. She's part of my company. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, you know, uh, she's like, you know, you should really try yoga to heal your body. I'm like, F that. I ain't doing yoga. You know, like, because I was one of those guys that made fun of yoga, you know, and ignorant <laughs> would be the opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> at some point, she got me down there. She went through a couple of different of these cassette tapes that she had. Mm. And I was like, mm, no, no. And then I saw a guy named Brian Cass, and he did a form of power yoga. Mm -hmm. And I liked him. Today, he's one of my buddies. Yeah. Um, but back then, he didn't have, back then, he didn't have anybody modifying anything. So I had to, she was like Gumby. I had to figure it out. Mm 
-hmm. and it was really frustrating. But I literally felt a little something that first week, and I'm just doing like the 20 minute thing because I didn't do it. I didn't do it farther next. My body was too. It hurt too much, so I do it twice a day for like 20 minutes. And then three weeks in, I felt I'm up to about 30 minutes, and I'm and I'm feeling like a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, this stuff works. And then I had rehab. I mean, I've rehabbed by that time, both shoulder surgeries and both knee surgeries. So I knew quite a bit about rehab. And God kind of made me instinctive in the way of breaking up scar tissue. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I just instinctively know how to do that. Mm-hmm. And rehealing my body from starting so late, you know. And um, so I mixed the rehab and the yoga positions threw in some old school calisthenics that I had to do to slow burn movement. And then I just started to figure out like, wow, this is really coming together. It's not just stretching me, it's stretching and strengthening because I started doing what I call dynamic resistance. So think of isometrics okay, where you're pushing and just yep. pushing, you're not going anywhere, but you're engaging all your muscles. If you were, if you had your car, yeah, and your wife and your baby were in the car, yeah. and it started going backwards. You would find a way to stop it. True. And if it couldn't go anywhere, you still your heart rate would go through the roof because you're engaging all these muscles to start it. Mm-hmm. And then at some point, two or three people come and they start helping you. Well, now you start moving it, and you start moving your body. And I figured out that by accident, every time you flex or engage a muscle. As you're moving with resistance, just think of time under tension, flexing and engaging like a bodybuilder. Every time you flex or engage a muscle, your heart has to be faster to get the blood to the muscle. Yeah. So what I figured out by accident, DDPY, and the reason I'm branding it DDPY now, it'll always be DDP yoga. So you know what the you know what the acronym stands for. But DDPY, I'm branding it so people stop calling it just effing yoga because yeah. it's not. And I don't want to be, I, I appreciate it and I respect yoga, but I don't want to be yoga. Yeah. Because people put it in a box. Um and, and but people who people who do my program go like, like. Yeah, it's yoga, but it's not. It, but it's really you not. Cause, I mean, the the kind of um, the kind of results that you and your team and your program have gotten over the last several years, I am not aware of any other yoga organization getting that kind of result for people because of some of the isometric isometric mu- movements and everything. I know, you know, I've I've shared with you off of air that my wife and I we chose to buy the program literally last night for some personal reasons for wow. our own family. Right. And we're doing that. We're going to engage it. I know my buddy, Bo, I know he's part of the program has been doing it for a long time. He's been raving about it for a long time. I was that guy in full candy. Right. Seriously. Oh man. I get it. I'm a, I'm a gym rat, dude. I want to live. I, get a dog. It. I want to do squats, you know? And he's like, no, you got to understand I'm losing weight. I'm getting more tone. Like I'm, it's all working and I feel freaking better. He goes, how many, how many times do you go to the gym, right? You go to the gym, you do your squats and your lower back hurts. You go, right. and, you go and do your flies on, on the thing. And then you, you, you got a torn pec for a month. Oh God, dude. You know I, I always say, I say, I always say, man, you take the last five years of me going in that, you know, in that gym. And I, I, and I literally lifted right on up till I retired. And then I didn't lift again. It's been 15 years, but I can't tell you how many times I left that gym going, Oh God, what did I do to my shoulder? Oh, no pain, oh. no gain, no pain, no gain. Yeah, oh, right. I'm sore. Yeah. Uh, under 25, no pain, no gain works Yeah. over 25, especially 30, 35, 40 pain means pain. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, so that's like a phantom belief. And yeah, all the old school guys who still got to hit the weights and, and they just got to do it. I've looked at some of the biggest, baddest SOBs ever. Yeah. And I can't tell you from superstar Billy Graham to Scotty Steiner, who was a Greek god, the, yeah. there's so many muscle tears in their body mm-hmm. that if they could go back, I think they would have done it a little differently. Mm-hmm. And 
What's great about DDPY, if you look at someone like, they're just, I mean, yeah, National Yoga Day was the other day. And I saw something, five wrestlers who you didn't know did yoga. And it named AJ Styles, who at 44 is still bouncing around like he's 24. Yeah. Well, four years ago when he blew his back out and they said, you're done, he's about to go to WWE. And his back is blown out. He started doing my program. He yeah. started working with me. And it wasn't just him. It was Tommaso Ciampa and you know, uh, Drew, Drew McIntyre, who's one of the, yeah, the top There's guys so in the world. Here. Chris Jericho. Yeah. You know, all, all those guys that I work with that they, they, they said they've never seen anyone, any other kind of yoga yeah. do what we're doing. Yeah. Because it's not just stretching. It's stretching and strengthening muscles, ligaments, and tendons. And when you add the whole dynamic resistance thing into it, where, I mean, you can lift your arms to the heavens yeah. all day long. You cannot spread your feet hip distance, grip your toes, tuck your tailbone, flex your quads, flex your glutes, grab the ball and create yeah. resistance. You have time under tension. You can only do it for so long. Yeah. And what it does, you know, what DDPY does, it's a kick-ass cardiovascular workout that we're going to put a Bluetooth heart monitor on you. Yeah. Up on the app, it's going to come your heart rate. At the end of the workout, you're going to see how long you weren't in the zone, in the zone, or over the zone. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're doing yoga, where you don't engage as you're moving, you're going to be in the blue most of the time. At some point, you're going to come into green, maybe a little red, but it's going to be maybe 20 to 30% of the time. If it's a home workout, maybe. Mine, it's going to be 80% of the time. Yeah. Because I'm going to have you, and if you're not in the zone, you're not doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> you right. Know, yeah. It's, just, it's sure. just the way yeah. it is. You can't not flex and engage and get it. And it can't just do it upper body. You got to do it everywhere. And when you flex and engage, you get kick-ass cardiovascular workout dramatically increase your flexibility, strengthen your core at a whole different level with no impact. Yeah. And I say minimal joint impact because my lawyer told me I had to. Because it was the <laughs> smallest bit of impact. You know? But you know, for me personally, I just figured it all out and put it together for me yeah. in less than three months. I went back to Dr. Edwards, who's one of the top spine specialists in Atlanta, Georgia. And he was one of three guys I went to, but he was my local guy. Mm -hmm. And when he saw what I could do in three months, he, like, didn't understand it. He yeah. was blown away. And he had not only signed my release to come back to go to the, back to the work at WCW, he also had to sign it for Lloyds of London. Wow. So I had a big policy on me, too. Yeah. You know? And uh, he signed off on everything because he was like, man, I, I, I know you're, you know, you still got to be careful though. You know, I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be 40, 43 <laughs> years old. You know? Until you decided and, to fly off the top rope again to, to, to the, uh, your buddy <laughs> down below what last year. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that was, that was the greatest exit ever. Yeah. You know, for me to be able to do that, three months before my 64th birthday. And it wasn't so much jumping off the top rope, even though that's what everybody looks at. It was being able to get in that ring and move with all those young guys. Yeah. And Jake Roberts sent me a text, WTF, no ring rust? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, how did you do it? Yeah, but it's because I work out in some portion, a part of my program every single day. Yeah. And I don't work out hard two days of the week. I'm just doing, just opening up my hips and my shoulders and my knees and my back. And, and as long as I keep doing it, it's like once someone has, and I'm going to show you this, you, we've been sit talking here about 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And this, and this is cold. And there ain't, okay. I'm not going to hold on to anything. I'm going to freaking just stand here and grab one of my feet, take it and stick it in your face, then pull it over my head and have a conversation with you at six foot four 
224 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. You know? <laughs> I can tell you right now, I'm 45. I can't do that right now. But and I'm so- I, I have a feeling in a month or so I'll be able to do that. In a couple of months, you will, if you work it, you know, and every single body, like that's one of my things, right? So, because people go, God, I can't do that. Let's go back to, you know, the quote from Henry Ford. You say you can't, you say you can, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Now, if you kind of say, I can't do it, add the three most important letters, Y-E-T, mm-hmm. yet. Yeah. That means I'm working on it. I can't do it yet, but I'm working on it. Yeah. And like that, when that becomes part of your vocabulary in yeah. your brain, well, you know, it, it, it changes, it changes your life. Well, I'm going to say you're right. Huge. I was watching when I, my wife and I were watching Relentless last, last night. Uh, I know author story has been out there for quite some time. It went viral, yeah. 71 plus million views and counting. I'm, I'm, I guarantee you. You know, but, you know, I've shared with you off air that my wife currently walks with a cane and or in a scooter. Mm-hmm. Um, she's had, you know, medical complications that we didn't see coming five years ago. Right. Um, when she saw and I'm just I'm speaking for her. and This is my personal opinion. When she saw Arthur start off with sticks and braces and walking to like walking around a corner and then straight up going into a full sprint. I promise you right <laughs> now. And I'm. I promise you right now, my wife wants to run again. She used to run six to 10 miles a day, you know, and I'm, we're, we're going to do it. We're going to do it together and I'll do whatever it takes to, to, you know, showcase that because those kind of results are not normal unless you're part of DDPY. And then those things become like normal. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you kind of brought most workout programs are about, and I don't mean this in a negative way. Most workout programs are about, the person that created the program, um, the success of the person that created the program, what makes DDPY and DDP so different is the simple fact that you actually care about the people you're serving. Like from day one, it and, seems like it's it's always been intentional. Well, it, I saw Zig Ziglar, very, very famous uh, Bible thumper, motivational speaker. Yeah. He had some of the greatest quotes Ever. Yeah. And he didn't he didn't say it exactly like this. This is my interpretation, but it's pretty damn close to what he said. And he said, you can get whatever you want mm-hmm. as long as you help enough people get what they want. Yeah. And I heard that I was 22. And that resonated with me. I was like, wow, that's <laughs> strong. Yeah. You're like, wow. Yeah, that, God, that makes sense. So, because it's all about service, yeah. You know, and you know, I've been that guy that have you know chasing that dream, chasing that goal of wrestling. That was you know, first it was a nightclub business, which I love, and then I went from that to wrestling. And I mean, when I told guys I was getting into wrestling at thirty-one, they just flat out laughed at me. Mm-hmm. And how I got in and how I did it, it's like never happened before. Yeah. Um, you know, if I knew that the odds, I probably wouldn't have done it. But that's where ignorance can be bliss, you know. <laughs> uh, but when I got in the, when I decided I was going to be a wrestler, when I had seven months left of my contract, I told two of my buddies, Jimmy Jack Garvin and Michael P.S.H., because this was going to be the last night that I managed them. And they were so, these guys busted my chop so bad. They ripped me so hard. Brother stuff, you know, yeah. just fun stuff. But that day, they were so empathetic towards me. They were like, man, we're really sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. They really felt bad for me. And I was like, hey, I know exactly what I'm going to do, bro. I'm going down to power plant. I got seven months left of my contract. I'm going to learn how to wrestle. (laughs) They turned and looked at each other and burst out laughing. Like Mm -hmm. Michael, he, he thought it was the funniest thing he ever heard. You know, and I gave him, you know, the your number one side and <laughs> seeing, seeing the ring. Yeah. And uh, the really cool part about that, that was in 1991. In 1996, Michael P.S. Hayes, who's one of the top writers, one of Vince's right-hand men up in WWE. And 1996, he was working up there in the office in WWE. 
And I got a phone call at my house. I just had a big match with Sting, and it wasn't in the top spot. This was January of 96. My career had not taken off yet. This is one of the things that kind of helped it. And I had this really amazing match with Sting. He, of course, he beat me, but, you know, the match, I was live in the match. And, mm -hmm. yeah, but I didn't really think a lot about it. You know, past hell, that was a hell of a match. That was a really good, good spot for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I got back to my house on Tuesday and I was going to the gym. I was getting ready to, I was running in and running out. And the phone rang. Ah, I'm just going to let it pick up the machine. And I heard Michael's voice. Hey, P.S. Hey, man. I'm like, and I'm going to pick up the phone. Mike, <laughs> hey, buddy, what's up, man? I go, God, I haven't talked to you in so long. He's like, God damn, son of a bitch. Mom, I'm like, Michael, Michael, what's the matter? What's the matter, bro? He goes, Yo, you all right? He goes, Page. You know how sometimes you call someone and you don't want them to answer the phone. You want to leave a <laughs> message. Yeah. I, I said, yeah. I said, do you want me to hang up so you can leave, call back and leave a message? Yeah. No, I got you now. Damn it. <laughs> He's like, I saw your match last night. Every Everybody up here did. He said, boy. I have never been so happy to eat crow in mm. all my life. Proud of you, bro. Click, and he hung up with me. <laughs> but, but the fact that that was a humongous moment mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. And then two years later, 97, I'm like top three guys in the world. Wow. Like, I'm on fire. Yeah. And I get a call from Jake. And when I pick up the phone, I hear, congratulations. <laughs> I'm like, Jake? Yeah. I said, congratulations? Congratulations for what? Reinventing the DDT. <laughs> so so here's, here's my mentor, who I yeah. consider one of the best ever yeah. at, every, at everything than anybody. Mm -hmm. And he had the best finish with a DDT ever in the 80s. And he called me to congratulate me for reinventing mm -hmm. in the 90s. Like that, though, both of those moments were super special because it did prove that work ethic equals dreams. And you can't give up, just like Arthur. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's what really put our company on the map was Arthur. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, um, you know, being on Shark Tank and then. The resurrection of Jake the Snake, and then yeah. so many other transformations that we have. And like we're a full blown production company now. We just like we're about to start filming our own show. Yeah, and because awesome. it's we've got we've got all the assets, and yeah. and I'm constantly working with people on a daily basis. Like we started this contest that uh, we started three years ago when we first put out my my book positively unstoppable mm -hmm. the art of owning it yep. so we did a, a million dollar contest positively unstoppable challenge and how we could give away a million bucks it's kind of like the whole in one thing you know like you get you could pay an insurance company 40 grand mm -hmm. and then we put a hundred books up there and in one of them books there's a million dollars and the other 20, the other 99 all got 25 grand in them. So if you don't yeah. win a million, you still win <laughs> 25 grand. Yeah. And, um, and the second place was uh, 10 grand. Third place is five grand. Now I got to tell you last year when we did this, we couldn't narrow it down to the top three. Wow. So I had to put another person in there and I wasn't going to have third place split. So I just do another $5,000 of my own money mm -hmm. in this contest because any one of these four people with their transformation, it was unbelievable. You know, any four, any one of them could have won. So then we go to the second category. What was your mental transformation? It's easy to see it because mm -hmm. there's videos of them in the beginning. Yeah. And 
they ain't this person. Yeah. Like you can, like, it's dramatically different. And any one of the four people could have won. So then we go to our third category, which is what, how did you, how did you um, track? How did you video? How did you journal this video? Like the reason why Arthur Borman's video is so powerful and anyone who's not seen it, just either go on YouTube and hit yeah. never give up Arthur. Just put Arthur Borman in there or go to ddpyoga.com or ddpy.com and go down. You can to the find bottom. it. It's, it's, not, it's there. not hard to find. It's, it's an everywhere. amazing video. Yeah. But the reason why it works the way it worked is because his son filmed everything. Yeah. So he had all of these, you know, flat down on his face. And, yeah. you know, when you, you got back up again. And, that, and people just love the whole thing. And he will be inspiring. He's, I inspired one guy mm-hmm. and I got him to change his life. Mm-hmm. And, he has inspired millions, yeah. millions of people. And uh, it, it, there's, there'll never be a better yeah. transformation uh, <laughs> because it's so dramatic. Yeah. But it's kind of like God sent me to him and him to me. Amen. You know? Yeah. And again, it's like, this is like, I love what I do. Yeah, I get man. the most... I tell people it's like it's kind of almost being selfish, you know, because you know during Christmas time, you know, everyone—not everyone, but many people—deal with depression and mm-hmm. you know, um, just pulling themselves down. What I call yeah. emotional gravity. And the first thing I tell them is the first thing I tell them every day: like help somebody, yeah, help anybody, and that's what kind of a community we have put together and one of my buddies chris gabriano started this page on facebook it's just ddp yoga one word and it was him and a couple of buddies now there's sixty four thousand people wow that are the most active group of people you've ever seen anywhere and and this is something i've been reading a book called the power of habits. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the things I, I literally broke this down verbatim because you were talking about, you know, helping people and it's just, mm-hmm. it's not just doing a job or whatever. Yeah. Like when you can really get to where you actually make a difference in someone's life. This talks about the power of change. It says people must believe that change is feasible. The same process that makes AA so effective. Mm -hmm. The power of a group teaches individuals how to believe. Real change happens when people come together to help one another change. Mm -hmm. Belief is easier when it occurs in a community. Wow. And I'm like, that is so, I mean, I live it every day with the people that are on that community, like how I've set up the DD, you haven't seen it yet because you just got- Yeah, we just got on. The, yeah. the program. Yeah, the, the app, the app, there's nothing like it. It's not, a, it's not a workout app. It's not a fitness app. It's a, it's, it's a total lifestyle app. Mm-hmm. Like on Mondays, every Monday, Motivational Monday. Mm-hmm. I'm bringing you some kind of message. Every Tuesday, doing a new workout, me or one of my other instructors. Mm -hmm. And there's over 300. And people will say, oh, DDP, your workouts will kill me. Really? My rebuild program, DDPY rebuild, we start in bed. Like you can't get out of bed. I I watched the one where you had the young, uh, I think she was maybe 65 or 70. And she was just getting up off the floor onto a chair. Right. Like right. that's one of the things that I love about your program is that you, you legitimately meet people where they are. Right. That's, You're not expecting that's, that's them to pivotal. start at a specific level. And I have not seen anything like that. And, and that, that's what I think. I always say there's, you know, there's better than there's less than 
And it was not the best as last time. And let's are different then. Mm -hmm. And we're always going to take the path less traveled. One of our, you know, our sound bites is DDPY meets you where you are. Mm. So <clears throat> workouts from laying in bed, sitting in a chair, yeah. using a chair. That's what I do with Arthur, Scott, Jake, so yeah. many guys. Use a chair. Trust me. You don't want to use a chair. Trust me. Use a chair. Change your life. Mm -hmm. And there's a good chance you might not need a chair again. But for right now, use it. Yeah. And then get the beginner and so forth. But every Wednesday is a new cooking show. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that most people don't know, or they think they know, is what they've done to our food. Mm -hmm. And our food in our country sucks. Sucks. I was just in Medellin, Colombia, getting stem cells. Mm -hmm. My neck, shoulders, back, knees mm -hmm. already feel different. Mm -hmm. Like this feels better. Yeah. The left knee, I'm not even aware of the issue I was having for the last year. Mm. Now, I'm not saying it cured anything, but I'm saying I feel way better already. <laughs> yeah. So I'm constantly doing it. I was down there, the food. I can't even put it, I can't even explain how much. Is it because better. it's homegrown and not, you know, have right. all kinds, it doesn't have preservatives and all kinds of stuff in it? And it doesn't have any freaking, it's got real nutrients in the soil. Mm. Like we have, like what's really, it breaks my heart because a lot of the big companies, buzzwords, gluten-free. I've been gluten-free for 15 years. Mm. Dairy-free big one organic once it became a big word the big companies start buying out those smaller companies mm -hmm. that do that the right way mm -hmm. when a big company comes in they take that level that they that label they just bought organic and they start putting that on shit that ain't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the quality just keeps dropping yeah dropping like you really want to try to get farm fresh from your area that are pesticide free because just think about how much cancer has grown yeah you know in the last 25 years since they've really loosened up and they fda is protecting us that they don't care about us the guys, and there's a whole, there's whole expose movies on documentaries on how the top people of the FDA worked for Monsanto and mm -hmm. Monsanto worked for FDA. Monsanto ended up getting sold because they were getting sued for billions mm -hmm. and Bear, Bear bought them mm -hmm. and they still bought them even though they were getting sued because now Bear's not getting sued, Monsanto is. Yeah. And now... That's under the, you know, everything gets yeah. swept yeah. under the rug, yeah. you know? So the food, the food, the food, man, I've been gluten-free, dairy-free for 15 years. Uh, I've been GMO-free for the same amount of time. And no one even knew what the hell I was talking about yeah. when I was talking about GMO. Now, yeah, I know. Yeah, they're bad for us. I go, you eat it all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, I it's, it's GMO. We did keto and stuff to. for a while. We, you know, and they were like, you know, obviously lo incredibly, uh, actually no sugar, low carb. And we started looking at the back of the labels on anything, ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, and like just sugar in everything. Uh, like, and, and, and up till this last year, there was never a percentage sign. Mm -hmm. If you take the ingredients mm -hmm. and you look at whether it's fat or carbohydrates or sodium, they're going to have a percentage right over here. Like, you know, 13% of your U.S. blah, 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 yeah. you should get a day. You went to sugar, and right recently they've started to put it in there with percentage because they passed some law. But for the last 50 years, there's been not a zero. There's been nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's how powerful – the insurance companies have been up till now. And they put aspartame in everything. Mm -hmm. That's like that's like the poison 
of poisons. I'd equal. like to see if there, if there's a, 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 some kind of statistic that's not only that relates it to, to cancer, like a percentage, but also the rise in depression and anxiety. Because as I've been oh. getting older, it seems mm. like the, the world is struggling more and more with depression and anxiety day after day after day. I know in my work, I'm combating it on a regular basis. I know in your work, you're combating it on a regular basis. It's got to be doing, it's got to be adding toxicity to the brain. All I can tell you is the people that I talk who do what I tell them to do, and I call it the list. Yeah. Like when you get on the app, you see this big block yeah. blue that says the list. Mm -hmm. You watch it. Because what I'm about to do is educate you. Mm -hmm. I'm about to try to show you things that you didn't know what it was. Yeah. You know, meaning that for starters, I'll, I'll give an example. Number one thing I want to know is what's your why? Mm -hmm. Like, why do you have this? Why are you here on the list? Mm -hmm. And I just don't want you to write it. I want you to speak to yourself. So you can tell because you could might get some great results and then hit a stalling, you know, stalling yeah. bad. You start, oh, I'm not getting what I want. I'm working really hard. Well, look back where you started. Mm -hmm. You are way different. Yeah. But you need to see that person. Yeah. You take those pictures. You know, I've had women who've told me, you know, I took those pictures, those six pictures that I do. They're about physiology, flexibility, and core strength. That's mm -hmm. what they're about. They cry for five days, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, and some of them, you know, cover themselves up. And yeah. when they take, you can't, you can't see anything. These are for you. These aren't pictures for me. They're mm -hmm. pictures for you. Now, will you maybe want someone to see those pictures later? Because nothing feels better than inspiring other people. Remember Amen. those four people? Yes. Rem remember those four people I told you about for last year's uh, yeah. million dollar contest? Not one of them got to the contest because they wanted to win money. Yes. They came to the contest to be accountable. Yeah. To be accountable, not just to themselves, but to people they were meeting online and getting to know. Mm -hmm. Like these people today, the girl who won is Kate uh, Candy. Um, Herndon, McCarthy Herndon, she, hers was, her physical and mental, her total transformation was mind-boggling. In six months, she lost 90 pounds. In a total of like uh, 10 months, she lost 135, which was half her body weight. She looks ridiculously amazing. But to see it, this person who was a victim and 270 yeah. pounds and this big thirst, this person, Completely different. Caitlin Kay, she came in second. Amazing transformation, not just physically, but mentally. Yeah. She was going away this, this I want to say today or yesterday, and she ended up now lost all the weight. Now she's cutting away the extra skin. Like yeah. her life, like to see where she's going is wild. And then the two guys, um, Caitlin lost, I think, Kate, Caitlin lost 130 pounds in both contests, meaning that wow. she went to the first one and then she won, lost like 75 pounds in the second one. Wow. Um, and then um, Sc uh, Scotty Jorgensen, he lost 90 pounds. And you see his flip, the flip is crazy. But the big one, the big one is a guy named Justin Dobbins. Justin Dobbins, when he started his journey, he didn't start it with me yet. But when he started his journey, he was 6'7", 698 pounds. Jeez. And for the first 10, for the first year, for the first year, he lost 174 pounds going keto mm -hmm. and, and walking. But he's still 524 pounds when he started our program. Mm -hmm. He ended up... Um, he, he started our program because he'd seen it help so many people mm -hmm. and his body hurt so bad that walking, he's still 524 pounds, yeah, yeah. Was, was killing him. Yeah, joint damage and everything. Everything. And you see him start. I wish he could have filmed everything. If he would have filmed it like, he, he, you know, today he would have. Yeah. He just still had some stuff so we could see like how bad who was and where he was at and how weak he was that next 10 months he lost 124 pounds mm. he would lose a total of 
uh, 401 pounds wow. in 22 months. Jeez. Wow. Wow. But forget about that. He's got 30 pounds of skin on him. Mm -hmm. And he's a stud. He's like crazy strong and mobile today. Mm -hmm. And he can do this shit. You yeah. know, hold this one over his head. <laughs> You know, you know, and he had really bad lymphedema on both yeah. legs. Yeah. And but you know, when you when you take out garbage and when you're in a position like he's in, you have to think about eating as fuel, mm -hmm. not as oh wow, this is gonna take delicious. Because over this part of your journey, what do you want? Yeah, why are you here? Going yeah. back to the list. The next thing is I'm gonna make you write down your goals. Yeah. But I'm going to break it down for you as an acronym, SmackDown, specific, measurable, achievable, compatible, keep it going, mm -hmm. down, do it, own it, write it down now. And I take you through all of that. Then I start you looking at the first, doc, the first lecture I'm going to have you watch is what I did for actors, directors, and producers in Hollywood. It's called Living Life at 90%. And it's based on the concept of life's 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. It's about rebooting your brain. The yeah. same way my book, Positively Unstoppable, helps you reboot your brain. Yep. And then I'm going to show you different... Um, uh, I'm going to have you join that community mm -hmm. that's on uh, Facebook. DDP Yoga, one word. Don't listen to a word I'm saying about this. Just go there. Just yeah. go there and read what people <laughs> write. Read yeah. what people video. There's 64,000 of them. Yeah. And in, 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 by the end of the day, all those things you just saw are gone because new stuff's up. And then new stuff's up. It's crazy. And so many people helping and liking. That's where Candy and Scotty and Caitlin and Justin all went yeah. looking for hope, mm -hmm. a community that helps each other. And again, it branches off of what I do, yeah. but I'm not doing that. They are. Yeah. Well, if you got and like, that's powerful. If you have a couple more minutes, I, I want to ask you two more things if it's all right. Um, the first of which was obviously one of your best friends on the planet uh, was in a really, really hard spot, Snake. And yeah. really, really hard spot had i would dare say have been like many of us at given times in that we we had given up um now he was a he was he was struggling in a, in a dark place for a long time one what kind of what made you want to come up and just be unre unrelenting or relentless in watching him become sure. successful right because i mean you watch resurrecting the snake and stuff like that there were definitely times it would have been easy to run you know watching <laughs> him kind of rebuild you know what i'm saying so you know, for oh, people out there who are just like, right. it's too late for me. It's too late for me. It's too late for me. I'm too far gone. I'm too far gone. What would you say? Never too late. And, and Jake's words, Jake will tell you, it don't have to be like that. Like, I literally just talked to Jake before I talked to you. Mm -hmm. And because he is, he's going to be in Atlanta for a couple of days. And I said, I, I'd love to do and catch up interview. Mm -hmm. Like, we haven't done one in three years. Yeah. I mean, to see when when you're well, first of all explain understand why I did what I did in helping him. Without Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, there is no Diamond Dallas page. Mm -hmm. He gave me all my early breaks. Jake was the first guy to believe in me mm -hmm. um, as a wrestler. Now you have to understand, I when I was when I tried to wrestle when I was 23. Yeah. That was in 79, and I got sidetracked, and I got pulled away from my goal mm -hmm. and my dream, and I had just having too much fun. And then wrestling blew up in the 80s, like four years later. Mm -hmm. I was so mad at myself that I didn't put the work in, mm -hmm. that I knew I was going to be, I should have been part of all of this. Yeah. And it was a blessing in, 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 in the big picture. But at the moment, I was so mad. I stopped watching wrestling. And then one day, I was flicking the channels, and I saw Jake Snake Roberts in the ring, and it sucked me back in. 
And then, and I just look like God had him show up in my nightclub in mm -hmm. Fort Myers, Florida. <laughs> and when and we were packed, like a thousand people yeah. in there, and I was in the office, and I'm, I'm looking at the people walking in the front door, and I see a huge cat walking with long hair and a Fu mm -hmm. man shoe. <laughs> I'm like, that looks like Roberts. Yeah. I run around the outside, I run in the front, and I'm like, Judy, did some guy just walk in here look like Jake the Snake Roberts? She's like, yeah, everybody thinks it's him. I go, I run in there. <laughs> yeah. When I see him, I slow down, you know, I get cool, you know, make my way over towards him. I'm like, hey, man, uh, you Jake the Snake Roberts? Who wants to know? <laughs> I said, the guy who runs this place, yes. What can I do for you? I said, what are we drinking? So that's how I meet Jake. And we got shit faced that night. <laughs> and he loved me. We just we just clicked. Yeah. And I I, he, I never charged him for a drink, mm -hmm. you know, and he would tell the boys. And because if you work in Miami with WWE and then you work in Tampa, that's 300 miles. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle, almost is Fort Myers. Mm -hmm. So they started stopping over. You're the this halfway so point. Yeah. Yeah. Do you halfway remember point. The, yeah. Do you remember Luke the Bushwhackers? Yeah, yeah. This is this is Luke. He put this up on he put this up on the other day <laughs> on Facebook. That's me, him, and Ted DiBiase. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Later We're that night, this is me and Ted DiBiase. <laughs> So, the, the, oh, the, 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 my, my point is that I was around all these guys, mm -hmm. and it was like I couldn't stop thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And that's how I came up with the whole Diamond Dallas page. My wrestlers will be the Diamond Exchange. You all know, have Diamond Dolls. Here's a great shot. This is before anything becomes real. I'm faking it till I make it. That's my 62 pick Cadillac. There's a couple Diamond Dolls. So we're freaking Harley. I mean, I, I was Diamond Dallas Page back then, yeah. but it was it was all a figment of my imagination, and it just shows you you can really, you know, doing that and comp what what I pulled off there, mm -hmm. or making DDPY working towards a household name, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's a thousand times harder than losing a hundred pounds. Yeah, it's a thousand. It may be a million times harder mm -hmm. because a lot of people say you hit lightning in a bottle, you know, being out there. And I, I did. And I went out to Hollywood because uh, as soon as I finally quit wrestling, I went out to Hollywood and I started paying my dues and going to, you know, Howard Fine's acting school and all that. And mm -hmm. I can remember and I can't wait. I wish I could remember this guy's last name. I met with his big producer when I was out there. And he said, so let me get this right. You literally caught lightning in a bottle in your wrestling career. He knew the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That was one of the reasons why he wanted to meet me, because he was a fan yeah. of my work in the ring. And he said, and now you think you're going to come out to Hollywood in the hardest thing ever and make it in Hollywood. And he goes, that's going to be like a billion to one. Hmm. And I said, well... I kind of think I'll have to disagree with you on that. And he goes, really? And why would you disagree with me? I said, because I know how I did it the first time. That's right. It wasn't like I stumbled over it. That's right. I never gave up yeah. and I kept working. And now I have a, I have a Netflix original show coming out probably fall to the winter of this year as soon as it does we gotta get you we gotta get you back on yeah and again that will be because we we could get lucky with it because you never know what's going to click and mm -hmm. this is a superhero thing it's a very dark superhero thing but it's something like you've never seen before mm -hmm. this guy adi shankar he gave me the opportunity to be able to do just like dusty Rhodes gave me an opportunity when he probably should never have done it you know <laughs> but he saw it but he saw something in me. Yeah. Adi gave me that opportunity for this role in this show. And it's pretty much my show. And, you know, I can't wait for it to come out. I'm super proud of it. The work that we've put into it. 
and the special effects that go with it. You know, it really has, it's got a real story. Mm -hmm. So, and I've done a bunch of bit acting, you know, besides Devil's Rejects and Ready to Rumble and stuff. It's all small stuff, but it's all stuff that prepared me, mm -hmm. you know, along the way. Yeah. And that back to the app, you know, I don't want to lose my focus there. That list that I was talking about is going to have you watch movies like Resurrection, Jake, to say, mm -hmm. Relentless. But it's also going to have you watch documentaries like Food Inc., mm -hmm. Genetic Roulette. When you get, well, I don't tell people, like when I'm working with somebody, um, like I'll see somebody, you know, that, that's working out there on that Facebook page or whatever, and I'll see, well, there he is at 390, and he can't even pick his foot off the ground because that's one of the six positions is, you know, mm -hmm. forward, side, fold forward. One of them is how far can you pick your leg up? Like a lot of people can just barely pick their leg off the ground. Yeah. And I see that picture, and then I see the guy at 380, and he's holding his foot over his head. Mm. Well, you can't do that unless you work your ass off. Now, yeah. you don't know what to eat. Yeah. So someone like that guy, I'm going to call him and say, and that's going to blow his mind. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, okay, go and do the list. Everything on the list. I used to have it in the back of the app. Now it's right out front because it's changed so many lives. Yeah. I said, go do that list. And when you do, email me back at this email. Yeah. Now, I'm going to quiz you on it. And if you didn't do everything, it's the last time we'll talk. Yeah. But they don't. They do everything. Mm. And, or they don't do anything. Yeah. So it's either <laughs> and if they or, don't, yeah. Right. If they don't, if they don't do the list, then they sure as hell ain't going to do anything else. Yeah. The list is the easy part. Yeah. It's going to take about 10 hours to go through everything and put the work in. But, that's building your foundation. Mm -hmm. Now, after that, put the work in. You've got the, it's the yellow brick road. Mm -hmm. It'll take you right to where you want to go, but you can't give up. Yeah. And you got to keep moving, period. Final question. I know I've kept you a little longer than I promised, but I, I, I'm, I, I love, enjoyed spending time with you so much. I couldn't stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. How do we, how does any, how, how do we become unstoppable? You know, that's the name of the show and it's the name of your mantra as well. How do we become unstoppable? You know, I think it comes back down to being, you know, relentless. Like it's just, you, know, you have to have people who have trouble, like, you know, with thinking they can, can't become unstoppable. You've got to change, change the story you tell yourself. You've got to, you know, some people say, oh, you shouldn't fake it till you make it. Why? I think faking it till you make it has everything to do with making it because you're starting to see it. You know, now you've got to continue to put the work in. I like this right here. I'm doing this mm -hmm. and there is no diamond Dallas page. Yeah. It's called dream. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. an idea in my head. One of my other very favorite quotes is by Albert Einstein. And he said, it's not that I'm so smart. I just stick with the problem longer. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how yeah. powerful, how powerful is that? When you understand that, you're on your way to becoming unstoppable. Yeah. You got to stick with the problem longer. If you're going to use the word, I can't do it yet, mm -hmm. add those three words, do it yet. You know, uh, it's all comes down to the story you tell yourself. Uh, I'll leave you with the last of my top three favorite quotes. And this is exactly what to me um made this guy who he was and i'll tell you the first the quote the repetitions of affirmations leads to belief mm -hmm. and once that belief becomes a deep conviction 
things begin to happen. Yeah. Now, let's break that down. The repetitions of affirmations. How does someone become unstoppable? The repetitions of affirmations. Now, they can be really good. Or they can be incredibly self-destructive. Mm. No one can do more damage to you than you. No one. Mm -hmm. No one can pull you down and make you feel worse about yourself. Because most of the time, people aren't even talking about you. You just think they are. Mm -hmm. Because you have such low esteem and such... You don't have any... You're, you think you're worthless. Yeah. You know, people talk about themselves like that. You know, one of the things in the Bible is treat people the way they want to be treated or the way they treat themselves. Yeah. I don't want you to treat me like that. Most people treat themselves like shit. Mm -hmm. They talk bad about themselves. They put shit in their mouths. They don't have any self-respect. I don't want you to treat me like that. Mm -hmm. I want you to treat me the way I want to be treated. Mm -hmm. I, so I'm, I'm going to treat you the way I want to be treated yep. because I treat myself really good. Yeah. I love myself. Yeah. And that is a key to being unstoppable. The repetitions of affirmations leads to belief. They can be really powerful. Yeah. I'm going out for my Hall of Fame ring. I haven't been in front of 20,000 people. That's how many people. Mm -hmm. But not this year or last year, but two years ago and back, there's 20,000 people at the Hall of Fame Awards. Mm -hmm. There's millions of people watching on TV at home. I haven't been in front of a crowd like that in 15 years. Mm -hmm. I got a 30, 27 minute speech. Mm. I could be thinking, what if my iPad freezes? Yeah. What if I get lost? What if I forget where I am? That could be my story. I'm first. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. But my but my story was I was thinking that was. This is going to be the greatest day of my professional wrestling career. Yeah. I'm going to blow everyone away. I'm going to make them laugh. I'm going to make them cry. I'm going to inspire them. You go to Peacock and pull up, because now the, the network, WWE Network, is on Peacock, and you pull up 2017 Hall of Fame speech, Diamond Dallas Page, it'll blow you away. Mm -hmm. It was the best thing I've ever done. The repetitions of affirmations leads to belief. And once that belief becomes a deep conviction, things begin to happen. Now, I'm not going to tell you who said that. I'm going to tell you what his affirmation was. And tell me if you know who he is. He said this over and 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 over, and over again. He would say, I am the greatest. Ali. I am the greatest of all time. I float like a butterfly. Sting like, like a, a bee. bee. <laughs> the one and only Muhammad Ali. Now, yeah. think about that, Steve. How would you know that? Yeah. How'd you know? How'd you know? Yeah. Because he it. said it a billion times. Mm -hmm. He'd been saying it since he was a kid. That son of a bitch was unstoppable. Yep. When he died, he will always be remembered as the greatest, but not just the greatest, the greatest of all time. Yeah. That's how he'll be remembered. I met him in 97. It was one of the highlights of my life, mm -hmm. he says, lock up, Diamond. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> he, he called that. The next time I get to meet him, he takes a picture with me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. I love uh, it, man. Dude, how does I, someone become unstoppable? Yeah. They own it. That's, That's right. how. Man, I have enjoyed this time. Uh, I honestly can't wait to do it again. Um, I know, you know, you've got this massive retreat center coming up that you're building. Uh, I can't wait to hear more about that. So as soon as you get a little further We'll talk along, about that. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll talk about that next time I come on. Sounds good, dude. Well, look, man, I appreciate it again. Where can everybody find you? Like, like you're hard to find, but where can everybody find you just in case? On Twitter, at RealDDP, at DDP Yoga. On Instagram, at Diamond Dallas Page, at DDP Yoga. My athlete page, Diamond Dallas Page, is on Facebook. I'm always on that. Uh, my, my DDP Yoga uh, Facebook, I'm always on that. But again, don't look, don't listen to anything I said here today when it comes to my company. Mm -hmm. Go to DDP Yoga, one word, not two words, one word, and 
read what people write. It's kind of like when you're in a crowd, 20,000 people to get people to chant your name. It's, you know, it's really hard Yeah, to get to they'll, today. They chant. This is awesome. Mm-hmm. This is awesome. They're not chanting the guy's name. Mm-hmm. They're chanting the stunt that they're doing. Yeah. In my day, they chanted who they believed in. Mm. In a world, you got to remember now, where they know that we know that they know. That me and my buddy both know who's going to win before we walk out there. Mm-hmm. Yet, they're going to chant. They're going to laugh. They're going to cry mm-hmm. over us. You got to really care. Yeah. That's why they do it. On the internet, they're going to write. They're going to write. They're going to write and write and write and write and write and bury you as fast as they can. Mm. Go to that site. Read what people write. You can't pay this amount of people any amount of money to do it. They have to be moved by a movement that is unstoppable. Amen. Period. Amen. Out, brother. Great Amen. talking to you. Text me. You got my number. Text me so I got you. Okay. And you call me, I'll know. I just took a picture of your thing here so that uh, uh, I know exactly who I'm talking to. Sure. And uh, you got any questions, you call me, bro. All right. All right. Sounds good. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> Get it, bud. What an incredible interview with such an amazing human being. Diamond Dallas Page, dude, you are one of a kind. Guys, if you haven't already done so, make sure you check out Relentless and even dig into DDP yoga like my wife and I have also chosen to do recently. And if you love that interview, I know you're going to love this one right here. So go ahead and check it out. You can either pay now through the pain of discipline Mm -hmm. or if you take the easy route and don't look at the warning signs, you'll pay a much more 